Today I'm going to, um, first of all, show you a quick and easy treat bag. Um, it can also be used for other small gifts and things. And um, then I'm going to present you with um, the next challenge for the Stampin' Peace VIP group. If you know people who are not in the VIP group that you think would enjoy participating, um, please invite them to uh, join our group. And this is the only place that I'm going to be doing challenges. Um, I have a business page, Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nabe, and I do Facebook Lives there 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on um, Tuesdays. I'm trying to get this straight. It seemed to have moved on me. Um, and then I also have a Stampin' Peace VIP group. And groups and business pages um, run a little differently and accomplish different things. And we can do different things on them. Sometimes there's different rules for them. Um, but it's on my Stampin' Peace VIP group where I'll be having challenges at least once a month through um, 2020, hopefully, and maybe beyond. And sometimes it's a, you know, I offer a, a gift just for participating. Sometimes it's um, you do the challenge and you're entered into a prize, into a drawing for a Stampin' Up! prize from me. So be sure to hang on until the end when I announce the challenge. Um, I also wanted to say, I believe it was Sunday evening Facebook Live, which would have been January 12th. I think that's correct. Um, I showed some quick as six, quick and easy cards with the Lily Impressions designer series paper and then how to make this um, card folder so that you can um, use it to give your hand stamped cards, your handmade cards as a gift. And I said, anybody ordering from that day on through the 17th from marynay.stampinup.net using my host code um, would then get all the makings for this project, the six cards plus the folder. So if you're interested in getting that project kit free, all you have to do is place a um, $50 order on marynay.stampinpeace.net and use the host code. You'll um, get the project kit free from me, but with that $50 order, you'll also be able to choose a level one celebration product. So welcome to all of you that have joined me. I would appreciate it if right now, if you could click share, that would be fabulous. That way we could get more um, crafters to join in on the fun and perhaps even take part in um, the challenge. Okay, so again, stay tuned to the end for the challenge. All right, let's get started. Today, I'm going to be using the Country Club Designer Series paper, which has just some really um, fun, I should turn it this way, some fun golf motifs as well as some beautiful patterns. Great for anybody who loves to golf, male, female, young, old, um, but also great for masculine cards. I should point out here that this one sheet of DSP um, has black and white images that you can color you can also um, use them just as black and white, but they can all be cut out and used for card fronts as well. And you would get 12 of those um, images on one sheet of the 12 by 12 cardstock or DSP. So welcome to my Stampin' Peace VIP group. I see that several of you are on. Joyce, uh, Jennifer Schwartz, welcome. Terry Dalton, welcome, all the way from Washington State. Mary Lou, Kathleen, Marilyn Joan, Marsha also joined, Dana, Wendy, 
Wendy Carr. We've got a couple of Wendy's on today. Um, please be sure if you are watching, please be sure to comment. Okay. And please comment throughout the video and uh, feel, free, feel free to share throughout the video as well. And you always know I like thumbs up and comments. That's a great way for me to um, see that you're following along and you're enjoying the projects. So <clears throat> during the holiday season, I showed you um, these couple treat bags or little gift bags that I made using the Christmas Time is Here designer series paper. This I just have a little candy in there. This one I have a little covered um, mini notebook. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make one of these. I just realized I brought my big shot out, but I didn't pull the die, but I'll get to that. And I thought since I had not used the Country Club Suite yet, that this is what I would feature. So you've seen the DSP. This is the stamp set that goes with it. I like this one. This would, I hope the next year is full of green fairways, blue skies, and short putts. <laughs> it has a set of um, matching and coordinating dies called Golf Club. You can see this die matches this image. You can cut out the golf ball image. Um, you can cut out a golf ball that actually has some texture to it. You have the divots in there um, and just other pieces that actually um, may not um, some coordinate exactly or match the stamped image exactly. And others um, simply are meant to coordinate with the products. Okay. There's this wonderful, absolutely Argyle 3D embossing folder, which I haven't used yet, but should be lots of fun. It comes with some wood embellishments. This too coordinates with, the, many of the shapes coordinate with the um, stamp set and the dies. Okay, great for layering as well. Little tiny dots that you could be could be used for balls and different things. And then it also comes with a set of four colors of the Country Club Baker's twine, and I should just say twine. Um, Night of Navy, Poppy Parade, Basic Black, and Garden Green which I guess I should have, when I showed the DSP, I should have showed you. Coordinating colors are Whisper White, Basic Black, Night of Navy, Garden Green, Crush Curry, and Poppy Parade. All right, to start making this um, small treat favor, treat bag, or gift bag, you need to start with a piece of, and I'm going to use this one. And actually, I just had a thought, but I'll make it by direction first, and then if we have time, if I have time, I will um, make another or show you the other idea I have. So you're going to start with a piece that's five inches by eight and a half inches. Let me see what this is. This is nine and a half, so I'm going to cut off one inch. It started out being a sheet of 12 by 12, of course. Okay, so five inches by eight and a half. Now I need to score it. My first score line is going to be, you start on the short side and you're going to score it at four and a half. I want to make sure you can see this here. Let me rearrange. There we go. I think you'll be able to see it now. Okay, so on the short side, I'm going to score at four and a half. This is actually going to be the bottom, the bottom. Then I am going to score at, whoops. Uh, lost my note here. Hold on, hold on. 
Oh, wait, I was in the right place. Okay, then I'm going to turn it and score at four inches. and eight inches. Okay, so it's five inches by eight and a half sheet of DSP. On the short side, you're gonna score at four and a half. On the long side, you're going to score at four inches and eight inches. Now, you'll want to pull out your bone folder and just make nice creases on each of those score lines. You can see that both sides of this DSP is really um, very nice. I'm going to use the golf ball and golf tee side as the outside of my bag. And on the inside, I'm going to have this pretty navy, garden green, black and white plaid. Now you'll need your paper snips and make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so now I'm going to cut just a little slit there and then I'm gonna cut this one flap off from the bottom. I'm not going to be needing that. Okay, and then over here, there's this little, um, not quite a square, right here. I wanna cut that out, but I'm also going to cut that on angles. The reason I cut the angles is that when you fold things up, you're not getting um, paper and um, cardstock stuff, whatever you're folding, um, bunched up in there. It just leaves a nicer, flatter, um, fold and closure. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to think about this so I make sure I get my my uh, adhesive in the right place. Yes. Okay. So I'm using tear and tape. My feeling is that anytime you're use, doing a uh, 3D project Tear and tape to me seems to be the strongest. Um, it's a really great value. The one roll lasts quite a long time. And again, like I said, I'm using it for 3D projects. So um, it's not like it's you're going through it really fast, but it is a very, very good value for what it is and for the amount that you get. And then I'm also gonna put it on this flap. Now, so this is gonna be my inside. So you can see what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna fold those flaps in and then cover it like this. Alrighty. So, and sometimes what I like to do is just go over that adhesive backing and then I pick up the edge with the piercing tip of my take your pick tool. Just makes it easier to pull that up. If you've got any little ends of the adhesive um, hanging off the paper, I would just fold it back onto itself, okay? So now I'm going to fold each of these in and then I'm just going to close that back side. Okay, or it could be the front, back. Now I have a little bit of the inside of the DSP showing right there. So I'm just gonna make that the back side, make this my front, okay? That means I didn't cut exactly perfectly when I was cutting off that, um, that flap that we didn't need. Trim it just like this, but if you decide to trim it like that, be very careful you're not cutting into the folded piece. All right, so this is what I have right now, just this plain little pocket pouch. 
and I need to pull my die to cut a pretty edge. I'm going to use the scallop edge from the seasonal layers dies, okay? And we do have other, um, other die sets that would work well to give you a nice um, pretty edge. To those of you that have shared, I thank you. I appreciate that so, so much. It truly is a tremendous help to me. So I want you to know that I really, really do appreciate that very much. And it's never too late to share. You can, um, you can share before, during, after, it all helps me. Now when I'm working with this, what I'm trying to do is I don't wanna just slap it on there because I want it to be, look kind of even. So what I do is try to line it up in the center of the die. And this die is very much, it is the same width as your cutting plates and the um, platform of the Big Shot. So you want to be sure that um, it's not hanging over the edge because it will catch, it will move the die, and it may um, damage your die as well. I'm going to use, I'm sure many of you have seen me use the washi tape to secure dies. Because I really don't want these to move at all. Okay. And just like that, and I'm ready to run it through. And this will cut through both layers of my designer series paper. Welcome to Eleanor and Cindy and Patty. I see more people have jumped on, that's awesome. Pam. Okay, I think I got everybody else. If you have questions along the way, questions or comments along the way, please um, feel free to share those. A word of advice too, remove your um, dies from your Big Shot right away and put them away to avoid losing any of those precious dies. Okay, so this is what I have now, all right? I'm going to use some, I don't know what colors I want to use. I just want to tie kind of a simple, um, actually I think I want to use these three, just like this. Maybe I'll switch out the black for the green because there's so much green in the background, it's not showing up quite as well. Yeah, maybe I just need two. Maybe I'm just gonna use the red and the blue. Okay. Oh, I like the three, I'm going back to the green. <laughs> oh, Pam, you asked what thought that comes from. Seasonal layers thinlets. It's in the annual catalog. And what I'm gonna do is just, um, well, there's a couple things I can do. I'm just going to, you know what I'm thinking as I'm going along here, and um, I guess it depends on how, what you're putting in to the bag. Oh, I'm discombobulated here. I know what's wrong. I'm doing, <laughs> I guess I'm a creature of habit. I have to do it from the same direction each time. Is anybody else like that? When Andrea and I run, I always like her to be on my left side and I'm trying to um, <laughs> step out of my comfort zone and let her run on the right side of me at times. But I don't know why, I guess the first few times we did it and it was that way, so I got comfortable. Okay, and I'm just gonna trim 
just like that. So this is what that triple bow looks like. You may decide you like it or it's a little too much. No, no big deal. You do whatever is your preference. If you want the single bow with just one color of twine, that's awesome. Okay, but just like that. Now, since I have the bow on the outside of this, this might be um, a nice time to do one of those um, little notebooks or something more flat that I'm not going to be packaging and slip it right in there. Um, it could be a little date book. It could be um, candy bar, pack of gum, gift certificate, that sort of thing. If I were to put in um, some candies or perhaps something like this, golf tees, I might decide to stamp um, an image and put it on the front and decorate the front that way and then put my candies or golf tees in a cello bag and tie the bag off with the twine instead. Okay, so there's one. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I do feel like I should put a tag on this. And we've got a few things here that I can use. The Happy Birthday, You're the Greatest Guy by Par. I think that's kind of cute. Any of these would work. Um, and of course, you can pull stamp sets from other places as well. Now, I did not take the time to put my labels on earlier and I'm not going to waste your time by doing it now so please know that yes the labels will get on there eventually but for right now I'm going to use it without the label I'm going to pull a piece of whisper white paper for scrap paper and I think I want to stamp this in Knight of Navy. So let me grab the Knight of Navy ink. I'm gonna stamp off one time just to see. Oh, that's a, that's a really nice image. I like how that turned out. Okay, it's kind of neat that the words greatest guy are actually the negative space. The ink goes on the banner itself. That's kind of fun. You know what? I'm going to punch it with this punch. It should fit nicely on there. So because I'm doing that, I want to pay attention to the direction of the punch. I'm going to turn my paper this direction to make stamping easier. <clears throat> I'm gonna give this a moment to dry. I can still see it's kind of glossy wet. This is one of our newest punches. It is in the uh, January, June mini catalog. And it is called the Label Me Fancy Punch. And it does a couple of things. First of all, it cuts out um, the tag itself. And then it can also cut out, cut out a little ribbon slot or um, a hole, act as a hole punch as well. You save the backing on the stamps for a mask. And what do you do with that, Marilyn? I know a lot of times, well, I can't show you on that one. Let me see. But a lot of times what I'll do is I do save the, all that negative space, the backing from the rubber, and I actually leave that in my stamp case, and then I fit my um, stamps back into those slots. So it's always easy if you're putting something away, take a quick look on the back, make sure you didn't miss putting a stamp in there. That's why I do it. Okay. Um, let me show you this also too. Um, I'm going to pull a piece of color paper 
just so you can see better what I'm talking about. I'm gonna set this aside just for now because I think these this punch is really neat. So a couple things you can do. You can go ahead, oops, go ahead and punch out the label. Label me fancy. Then you can stick it back in and punch a circle or punch a slot. Okay, now I got these pretty well centered. This one's off a little bit. There is a trick to that. Punch that part first. So if you know you want um, the little hole near the top, punch your hole first. Turn your punch or turn your paper and then you can um, see where that hole is and decide, do you want it real close to the edge? Do you want it in a little further? Do you want it up, you know, maybe you want it, want to hang it this direction, okay? But you'll be able to center it within that punch where you want it. Like that, okay? Now, if I wanted to do the same thing, but with the slit, I might have to, let me cut some of this off. I don't want to waste too much of the cardstock. So I could go in like this. Still not. I'm probably, yeah. And then put that ribbon slot where, right where you want it within the punch space and punch it and you have that. You could also punch the slit on the opposite side and you can um, have this on the front of your tag or whatever and actually take the ribbon through almost like a buckle and have the ribbon come through the back and you could put um, an imp stamped image or stamped uh, sentiment across the front and the ribbon would come out the slot on the top and then wrap around. Does that make sense? Okay, so a lot of fun things. Now it's also paired with the Label Me Lovely stamp or punch, Label Me Lovely punch. And let me use a different color this time. Yep. all these scraps and they're getting all tangled together. Let me pull some of this apart. Okay, so this is the shape you get with the label me lovely um, punch. Now you can also use, this is what I love about this, you can also use the um, the hole or the ribbon slot and do the same thing with this coordinating punch. That leave quite enough space there. Got a little cut off, but you get the idea. This is I wouldn't obviously wouldn't use that on a card with that funny edge, but I'm just using scrap paper to show you. Okay. You could do the same thing. Um, and instead put the dot. You could also put the ribbon slits, um, ribbon slots and the dots on the outer edges as well. Okay, so just some fun, um, fun and versatile punches, I would say. Now somebody, I don't remember who, said you're a plaid girl. So I'm just gonna make you happy, Miss Plaid Girl. And I'm going to punch this pretty navy plaid using the Label Me Lovely punch. So now I've used both punches, okay? And what I want to do is layer these. It can go that direction with the straight side at the top and bottom or the left and right sides. 
I think I'm going to go this direction. <clears throat> I'm going to pop up the sentiment with some dimensionals. Oh, I see what you're saying, Marilyn. You use the, um, the adhesive backing parts to use as stencils for flowers and leaves and things like that. That's awesome. Great idea. Thanks for sharing that idea. Okay, I'm gonna go back in. I decided I do want a hole here, which I could have punched before, right? But I'm doing it now, there. And this time I will use, I'm gonna use a, a bit of the green and I'll tie that to the front. And then I want to show you an alternate way to, um, to make this bag. I won't make the entire second bag, but I do want you to see this other idea instead of using the scallop or a die cut edge or a punched edge. Okay. A lot of times when I'm adding tags, what I like to do is fold my um, ribbon or twine in half, and then I push it through the front, from the front to the back, and then I have this loop. Then I'm going to take the ends of the twine, pull them through that loop, and back. Okay just like that. And then I can go in and, like I said, I made kind of a big bow since I did the triple bow. But I'm just going to put it on there. Actually, maybe that triple bow is a little much, you think? Maybe I should tone that down with a single bow. Oh well, you never know till you try, right? Sometimes I just like to do a variation on those very ordinary things like tying ribbons and bows. Okay, so this is what I have. Let me arrange the ends, the twine here. Okay, I think that's kind of cute. All right, what do you think? Do you like it? I probably, next time I probably, this is kind of bulky right here, so next time I probably would do, oh, you like the triple bow, good, Terry, because I'm like starting to question it now how much I really like it. Okay, so that's that. So let me go back and show you again how to make this bag, but um, changing up the top. Who was it that said they're the plaid, you're a plaid girl? So I don't have to scroll back through the comments. Who, who was the person that said that? Okay, so let's find another plaid. Oh, that's kind of fun, isn't it? It's got the argyle on the back. I'm not sure if there's another plaid in here or not. Oh, there is. Oh, that's kind of fun. Okay, we'll go with this one since somebody said they're a plaid person. Remember we start with a piece of DSP that Cindy said it. Okay. We start with a piece of DSP that is, make sure you can see this, five inches by eight and a half. And this piece is nine and a half. So I'm just gonna cut off one inch. So five inches by eight and a half. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do, sorry. Instead of doing five inches, we're gonna do six inches. Okay, this is the variation. Six inches by eight and a half. I caught myself. I hate wasting DSP. Lisa, thanks for joining. 
It's nice to have you. Debbie White, thanks for joining in. Okay, so I have my piece now that is six inches instead of five. I used five inches and then put a scallop border across the top of that one. Now what I'm going to do is along the top, and I'm gonna have this be my front, um, I'm going to score at one inch on the front. And you can, you can make it whatever width you want there, but I added a one inch, so I'm scoring at one inch. And I'm just gonna fold that down like this. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my other score lines just like I did on the first sample. And that was, um, it was four and a half. So you either, to make it the same, you either want to fold down that one inch flap or add the one inch. I'm just going to fold down that one inch flap that I added, okay? So you just have a half inch um, flap at the bottom. And then I need to score at four inches. and eight inches. The next step will be to um, press those score lines, get some nice creases, use your bone folder for that. And then, so these are my flaps. I've got this here and I've got the bottom. I do not need this part. So I'm gonna cut that away, but remember, I'm going to put that angle on. So it just makes um, things fold nicely. And then I need to get rid of this little square in here where the score lines intersected. But again, I'm not gonna cut on the score lines. I'm gonna cut outside of them at an angle. Okay. Flip it over to the front. And this is where you're going to be putting your tear and tape or very strong adhesive onto the flaps. Now with this one, you can go right over that, whoops, that gar plaid, garden green plaid edge that we have. And I do like to go close to, as close to the fold as I can get it. Everybody knows why it's called tear and tape, right? Because you simply tear the tape to the length you need it, and then you pull off, tear it and pull off the adhesive backing. You're gonna tear it and then tape it down. Oh, Pam, lost you again, oh no. That happened um, Tuesday evening for you, okay. Now you're going to fold those two flaps in and you're going to fold the back side over on that. Okay. So there's your pocket. I would suggest you have this little piece sticking up. I would suggest that you put, um, even a glue dot will work, but just adhere that down because chances are, if you don't, it will get tattered and torn, okay? And one little glue dot takes care of that. So this is the alternate project, the alternate um, little bag, okay? So again, treats, um, 
in this particular case because of the um, theme of the DSP, golf tees, um, a gift card, packs of gum, um, little notepads, whatever. You could even insert a card, a greeting card in there. Um, so use it for anything. And of course, what you put inside maybe um, may come from the theme of your designer series paper. So what I put in here may be very different than what I would put in the um, Bonanza Buddies or Birthday Bonanza Buddies, whatever that's called, designer series paper. Alrighty, so the challenge for you is, because you don't have to have any special tools or fancy gadgets or anything like that, to cre create the basic gift bag or treat bag, the challenge for you all is going to be to make one of the bags. You can use any kind of Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper, current or retired. Current's always fun because we can show off to more people um, what is actually current right now, but any kind of Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper, okay, current or retired is okay. Make one bag, okay? The second part, second requirement is that you decorate it somehow. Don't just make the plain bag, decorate it somehow. Tags, stamped images, um, uh, cutout images, using different embellishments and ribbons and trim, etc. But have at least one thing on there that is stamped, okay? And then the third requirement of the challenge is that you fill it with something. It can be it could be anything at all. It could be a decorated cookie that you've put in a cello bag and tied with um, a cute ribbon and maybe put a tag on it, okay? Um, it could be you're using this as a gift card holder. How would you insert that gift card? Don't just drop it in, put it on a piece of cardstock or something, slide it in and maybe have a nice stamped sentiment on it and decoration on the front, okay? So the challenge is to um, create one of these, and it doesn't have to be this exact design. You can you know, do the fold over, you can do any kind of fancy edge, but to do the basic gift bag or treat bag or pocket bag, um, pocket holder. And then, um, so to make that with Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper, to have some kind of stamped image or sentiment on it, a stamped portion, also hopefully stamping up, um, and then to decorate it and fill it. Okay, so those are the requirements. You have until January 31st to complete this challenge. Okay, who's in? Who wants the opportunity to win? Um, I don't know what this time. I know, Joyce. So I've got, in fact, I've got a pile of packages back here that I need to get to the post office. But you know, this thing called Creative Escape Weekend and working visiting angels keeps uh, interrupting my crafting life. So um, for this, we're going to do a drawing. The drawing, the prize for the drawing will be, so all you have to do to participate is, um, and get your, you do have to take a photo and post it to the um, Stampin' Peace VIP group to be entered in the challenge, okay? You have to do that part of it, otherwise we don't see it. Um, anybody who completes the challenge, meeting the three requirements and posting a photo to Stampin' Peace VIP group will have your name entered into a drawing. The winner of the drawing will receive, oh, let's see. How about a, let me think, let me think, let me think. Something fun. How about a, let me see if I have it right here. How about, um, a punch okay 
and well let's just say this this is one of the celebration punches okay does anybody who's watching have this maybe we should just say a punch okay the punch of your choice the winner so um you know complete the challenge your name gets in the drawing the winner of the drawing will get his or her choice of a um punch okay um, and it needs to be a single punch. I'm sorry, I can't do the um, punch packs, you know, like the two set of two hearts or whatever, but any single punch of your choice. Um, I think the last time I gave away a punch as a prize, Dana Campbell was the winner of that. Okay, ladies, that's all I have for you. I've got errands to run. I've got um, packing up to do for my creative escape weekend that starts tomorrow. I'm super excited about that. It is sold out. I have awesome make and takes. And of course, we'll meet up with um, lots of wonderful crafters and stampers. So have a great weekend. Thanks for spending part of your Thursday with me. Please share my Stamp and Peace VIP group and share this challenge as well with your crafty friends. I'd love us to see as many people as possible participate in this challenge. Have a great day and a great weekend.